All right, fellas, it's your meet episode of the week. I'm excited to be here with you. We're going to try something different today. But before we get into that, we will always open the line within us with God's word. That's it, that guides and directs everything we do. So our, our, our scripture this week is out of the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Guys, such a powerful verse. Go back to the spiritual kickoff. If you missed that spiritual kickoff, guys, I really took a way to try to unpack where, where you would understand how we can simplify and apply this to our life. And guys, I am telling you, if you, if you understand that he has overcome the world, that the tribulations are going to come, but where we can have victory, there is power in that. So today we're going to be talking about victory in Christ, how we can overcome dark valleys and actually move towards that permanent joy. Fellas, I'm so excited to have this one for you. So what we're going to be doing for these solo episodes, I'm trying something new, and I really want to get your feedback on this stuff, okay? Because really, you're the listener. It matters to you. It matters to me what you think, okay? So what we're going to do, I teach Sunday school. I teach Sunday school. I usually do about every other week. I love teaching Sunday school. It's something that I, I really kind of got uh, somewhat put, I, not forced into, but I was asked to do to, if I would teach. And I thought, you know what? Sure. Let's try it. And I found that I absolutely love it. The first couple weeks, I was so nervous, y'all. I mean, just up there, just mumbling and stumbling all over myself. You guys have heard me do that from time to time here. And I, But I found that I put a lot of effort in preparing those Sunday school lessons. And then I teach the lesson and it's gone. You know, the, the lesson's gone. And some of the lessons, the Holy Spirit reveals so many things to me that I want to share that with you guys. Okay. So what I'm going to start doing, usually once a month, you guys probably have noticed the cadence. Usually it's around once a month. We do us with these solo episode weeks where, where it's just me sharing message. I want to start sharing some of these lessons because there's so much in God's word that can guide and direct us. And absolutely, I'm going to try to, to, to bring in instances how I apply this to my life and give that to you guys directly. But there's so much, guys, that we can learn just from walking with him and just spending time in the Word together. And I know you're busy. I know you guys got a lot going on. But my prayer during this time, particularly for this episode today, is that we're going to just understand, you know what? There's going to be an opportunity for us to go in Christ. And that opportunity comes when we dig in you got to drop the plow a little bit and actually get into the word. And when you do that, it is so awesome. I get fired up on it. So hopefully you will too. All right. So the main point we'll be talking about today is that in Christ, we have victory over anything the world's going to throw at us. And if you went back to that spiritual kickoff, you know, that's true because he has overcome the world. Not you, not me, Jesus. He has overcome the world. So think about uh, a victory. Maybe think about the last victory that you actually had, the last time you won something, okay? And for some of you guys, maybe it's been a while, or maybe not. Maybe you're in a bowling league, or maybe you're in a softball league, or or some type of sports thing, or or maybe you won an award at work, you know, a high performance award, or you know, uh, you you search you set certain records for maybe attendance or things like that. There's all people like to be rewarded. Let's just be real. Totally get it, okay? So rewards are fun. That's why you see so much gamification going on out there uh, with business and things like that. It's because people keep score. Like you cannot put a bunch of dudes on a basketball court, give them a ball, and expect them just to shoot around. Like eventually a game's going to break out, and guess what? They're going to keep keep score. Why? Because that's what we do. That's just who we are. I think that that's part of, uh, of the way God designed this, okay? Now, recently – I actually was able to have Clarence Hayes. If you guys remember back way back in, in the uh, uh, the podcast, Clarence came on and he talked about his book, The Pursuit of Victory. And recently, I was able to actually have Clarence back on the sh- on, in the community, or ask me anything. And one of the things came up that I just rem- I, I remembered, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, now it has it's an it, it's it's it breaks down what he talks about as things that derail us from being victorious. And he breaks it down into four words, sin, excuses, laziness, and fear. And when you look at those four words at the surface level, you discover there's really only one thing that's going to derail you, right? And it's you. Take those four words, sin, excuses, laziness, fear. What's the first letter? S-E-L-F. Self. 
oftentimes our self is what derails us the most from being victorious in what Christ has for us. So now we have to recognize these areas in our life, guys, and we got to start pruning that stuff out. Okay, so that's just a great acronym. I think if, if we want something that we can can actually start using more and more, is just recognize, hey, when, when I feel like I'm not walking or doing things that I, that, that I should be, is this just a straight up sin? Am I sinning? And we should know that. There should be some conviction there. Or maybe I'm just making some excuses. I'll get to it. Eventually, yes. Or I can't do that because of this. I can't because we hear that. I can't because, yep, starting to make excuses. Or laziness. Let's just be real. We're a lazy society. Right? You look around. People don't want to work out. People don't want to get up. People don't want to put in the work. They, what do they want? Instant gratification. They want stuff given to them. I'm just being real, fellas. Now, this may be turning you off right now. Well, maybe this is, you know, maybe you don't want to listen to this episode. That's fine. But if I got your attention this far, hang with me. The last one, the last one, fear. Think about that fear. I'm going to tell you right now, fear is one of the greatest tools that Satan uses. He is, he is a master at using fear because if he can render you ineffective, and render you to where you don't do any work that God's called you to do. He's won. He's won. And often he does that by placing this fear inside of us. You know what? Ah, man, I probably should go on that mission trip, but man, I just don't know. Well, I don't know. I should give it this, to this organization because I know that they help, uh, you know, human trafficking victims or, 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 or help, uh, people who are li living in poverty, but, you know, I, I, I'm not sure about that. Well, man, I really think I need to start sharing the uh, my testimony with people I run into and, and, and start living out my faith more. But, man, what if people start judging me? Right? All these things. I'm just telling you, fellas, this stuff's real, right? Right? Man, I don't know. If I share the good, if I share and start talking to Jesus, people are going to think I'm weird. Or if, they, if I start asking somebody about their faith, then what if they ask me a question and I don't know and then I'll look silly? Does any of this stuff sound familiar? And I know it does. You know why? Because I've had the same thoughts, guys. Because Satan uses the same tools on me. So look, we have to understand that fear, look, that is not, that's not from, from God. That is from the evil one. So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to look at some scripture in John. Now, John 16, 33 is where we're going to end up, okay? But we're going to go back earlier, and we're going to, I'm going to read some, a, little, a few pieces of Scripture, and then we're just going to unpack it together. And that's how we're going to go about. That's how I teach Sunday school. I really love doing that. Uh, Pastor Joby has taught me a lot on that, just by his preaching style, just that uh, verse by verse, going through unpacking. And I find that's the best way, if you want to grow in God's Word, just, let, just, just sit in it. Sit in it and soak. So let, let this help you. So we're going to be in John 16. I'm going to read a couple of verses right here to get us started. So we're going to start off at 19 through 22. Okay, so we're looking at verse 19. It says, Jesus knew that they wished to question him, talking about the disciples. Okay, and he said to them, are you deliberating together about this? That I said a little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but your world, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Wherever, whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that the child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take away joy away from you. Okay? So guys, let's just look at that scripture. Let's think about it. Jesus was telling it right here uh, that he was going to be leaving but it wasn't sinking in at this point. It really wasn't sinking in at this point. And because when you look at 20, and he's telling like, look, you're going to lament, you're going to cry. That probably been hard for those guys to hear. Because remember, these uh, most of them have been rolling with them for over three years, right? Just imagine a buddy you got. You've been rolling with them for your, for as long as you can remember. And he's telling you, you know what? I, I'm gonna, basically, I'm out of here. I got to leave. I'm going to die. That would be a hard pill to swallow, right? So understand this is this is very important just to see the context of where the disciples were, maybe where you are in your journey. Let's just look at verse 19 and 20. OK, just just those two verses directly. It says he knew that he wished 
that they wished to question him. And he said to them, are you deliberating together about this? And I said, a little while, and you will not see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Now, what's going on? They were curious because of what he actually had said in verse 16. So verse 16 says, a little while you will no longer see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Now, <laughs> that's a confusing statement right there, right? I mean, you would be confused too. If your buddy says, you know, a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me. You would be thinking, well, maybe they're going to the store and they're coming back. That's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about his literal death, but then the resurrection, right? That's what he was talking about. And he, as the Messiah, he was revealing to them in the moment things that are going to come. And he had to be direct with them and head on with the way he explained it. That's the way he was with those disciples. He had to be direct and head on, right? They didn't pick up the nuance, the nuances there. So that weeping and that mourning that Jesus is talking about right here, that is real. That's real. They saw him crucified on that cross. Imagine the torment that they were going through their mind. Of their, just, just from a human element. Their friend was crucified, y'all. This is big deal. Big deal. And then when Jesus says, you know what, though? The world's going to rejoice. Well, he said right here. He says, truly, truly, that you're going to, you don't, you will weep and lament, but the war, world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Guys, I'm going to tell you right there that that's a, interesting when you start thinking about it. Why would they world rejoice? Well, they're going to rejoice because they got rid of what they thought was the troublemaker, right? They, everybody thought Jesus was a liar, a blasphemer. He had all the Jews that were going up against him. They didn't like what was going on. So what did they want to do? Crucify him. Crucify him. And they got what they wanted. They were happy, right? They literally let a, a, a thief go, right? A criminal go so they could crucify an innocent man. It's crazy when you think about it. But they were rejoicing in that moment. But, but that, so, that sorrow that the disciples were feeling, that didn't last long. That turns to joy. Victory was coming. It would come to them. But they had to walk through a valley first. And that's a great lesson to take right here, guys. You will weep. You will lament. But the world will rejoice. You will grieve. But your grief will be turned into joy. That's not maybe turned or could be turned. It says your grief will be turned into joy. And I know you may be in a trial right now. You're like, there is no joy in what I'm in. I totally get it. Things happen, right? I totally get that. The world is full of this stuff. But I'm just telling you, you trust the sovereignty of God and understand that, that it is, you were not, it's not circumstantial. That you, the only way you're going to have any joy is having that relationship with Jesus. That's what he's telling them right here. He's telling them, look, your, your sorrow is going to shift to joy. Buddy, <laughs> that's when it gets really good. Now, let's look at another, the next verse. Very interesting verse. Verse 21. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy the child has been born into the world. Okay. Now, I've never personally given birth to a baby. <laughs> Guess why? Because I'm a guy. And I know that's controversial these days. That's another podcast topic in of itself. But let's just be real. I've witnessed it, and it's painful. I can only imagine what you ladies go through, right? And that's when the pain, when you think about it, if you've ever been with, with a lady and she's going through a childbirth, you know in that moment when the pain gets real, right? And you, you start getting those contractions. They start intensifying. And next thing you know, you know what? You're in full-blown labor. And that stuff, at that point, once you've been in full-blown labor and, you, and you've been with uh, I've been with my wife in full bone labor a couple of times now. I like sometimes they can't even speak. They can't speak. They just have to breathe their way through those contractions. Right. And that, that pain is intense. It's intense. And look, I, I, I understand. I always like to like, like to joke with this one too, about whenever I tell this story, you know, talking about the difference between uh, kidney stone pain, baby pain and how, you know, guys that pass kidney stones, it's worse than, than having a baby. I mean, there's a lot of pushback on that. But my my only reason I bring this up is like, yo, yo, I've never seen a dude say, I wish I had another kidney stone. 
But I've heard plenty of women say, you know what? We should have another baby. I'm just saying. So I don't know if that's something to do with the, the level of pain, but I thought it's worth sharing. But at that moment, let's put yourself back at this moment what Jesus is, is, is sharing here. When do you forget the pain of childbirth? You forget the pain when you hold the child. When you hold the child in your arm, at that moment, you completely forget about all that pain that was endured. Ask any mama out there, and she'll tell you. At that moment, joy. Joy enters your life. There's a, there's a, a, a just a, your heart's full right there, right? And we, as, 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 as believers and as, as people in general, we were built for this. That's what we want. This is a great analogy. This is why Jesus uses, uses this analogy because it's a wonderful way for us to connect and what we can expect with him, right? With him, that, that, that joy that we have when we get to hold our child. And look, if you haven't held that, had that opportunity to hold your child before, look, I'm with you. I'm praying for you. If you want to hold a child, I totally get it. But you just have to trust in, in the sovereignty of God. But when you have that waiting for us in our Savior. And how beautiful, how beautiful is that? And the last verse right here we'll look at here real quick, guys, for, in this little section is verse 22. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. Now, what he says right now is your time of grief. That could be confusing, right? Because he just talked about the joy, right? He just talked about the joy. You know, so plus, remember, he's still uh, literally in the center, in the room with these guys, right? He is with them in the upper room. They're still talking. So what, they were probably thinking like, Jesus, what are you talking about now? Why are you saying that? Right? But he was going to be violently taken away. We know that. He's going to be violently taken away from those guys. And we know what he was going to be put through. But again, he loved them so much. He was preparing them for this. Preparing them for this. Because he says, I will see you again, right? That broken fellowship would be restored. There would be a time yeah, where that would be broken up. He wouldn't be there, but there would be a restoration, right? It wouldn't be the same frequency. Like Jesus didn't hang out with them the same, at the same frequency level as, as he did before. But they had the assurance that they would see him again. And that was tremendously comfortable, guys. Tremendously comfortable. He says, you will rejoice. You will rejoice. We're, we are released from sorrow. They would be too, right? And this joy he's talking about, this ain't fleeting, guys. This is permanent joy that he is talking to about here. Ultimate joy. I'm talking about the peace that passes all understanding joy. And that, fellas, that is what we have when we put our trust and our, and our, and our faith in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And there is nothing more powerful than that, guys. Nothing more powerful than that. So he's just telling them right here, look, pain's going to come. You're going to have grief. You're going to have it. He's not, he's not saying maybe. He's saying, nope, you're going to have this grief. But, but I will see you again. Right, guys, I don't know about you, but that gives me such encouragement, such hope to have just to be able to read these words and to understand that the cross is not the end. It's not the end. The resurrection, that, that comes right after the crucifixion. He had to do that. He had to do that. Reunion follows separation. Joy follows sorrow. Just remember that. Because you may be in a season right now where it just absolutely sucks. I'm just being real with you guys. I know there's a lot of you guys who are struggling right now. Take hope in these words from our Savior. Joy is coming. Joy is there. Joy follows that sorrow. You're going through that trial, going through that tribulation. But I'm telling you guys, you're, you're not the Lone Ranger here. Our Savior, he understands that. He connects with us. He feels all the feels. He's right there with us, guys. So hopefully that, just that right there is a little encouragement. So we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to pick up in John, and we're going to go see a little bit more about, about these things on how we can keep overcoming these dark valleys and start transitioning to permanent joy. We'll be right back, fellas. Listen, guys, our habits matter. They're either making you better or they're holding you back. So if you're feeling stuck and you need some ideas on how to create some new habits that's going to make an impact, 
I want to help you out. So I outlined a guide that will give you nine habits. That's nine that will help you grow spiritually, mentally, and physically. So to get your free guide, head over to thelionwithin.us slash habits. That's thelionwithin.us slash habits. And start creating the habits you need to be the leader God intends you to be. All right, now let's skip down in our in our scripture. And we'll still be in John 16, okay? And we'll look at verse 27 through 30, okay? 27 through 30 says, For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. His disciples said, Lo, now you are speaking plainly and are not using figure to, a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Right here, guys, very interesting scripture. And we go all the way back to the beginning of John 1. And, and, and you know, John 1 starts off, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says in verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. So we understand that right there, he's Jesus is clearly, clearly stating where he comes from, right? He he's letting them know, like I have come from the Father, and I have, I'm coming into the world from the Father, and I'm leaving the world to go back to Him, right? That's what he's telling right here. So and he he's not making any gray area; he's just being very direct. So let's unpack this scripture verse by verse as as we grow together. The verse 27 says, for the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that have come forth from the father. Huge implications here, guys. Huge implications. Right. God's been silent for 400 years to this point. Right. And Jesus told him that God loved him. And that had to be extremely impactful for them. Just think about it. He's telling them that God loves them. He even clarifies the how. Right. He, he, he says, because you have loved me. And believe that I have came forth from the Father. So he's he's laying that right out for him, right? This new he created a new relationship with God when when he came here. And these guys couldn't even imagine what he was doing. And it was no longer about the laws, the sacrifices, or or or, or the priestly things. No, it wasn't about that. It was about relationship. This is another thing that came up the other night, guys, and, and where to me, where it's like if you feel like you're always just serving, I just serve, serve, serve. Wow, that's great. We are called to serve. I, I am big on servant leadership and all these different things, right? I think that we should be doing. If you're in a local church, you should be serving. But the convicting part for me was don't miss the relationship. Our father wants a relationship with you. If you're a man, he wants a relationship with his son. If you're, if you're a female, he wants a relationship with his daughter. So we can get so wrapped up in the serving and checking the boxes that we're doing that for ourselves versus doing it for him. So make sure that we prioritize the relationship first. Now, serving should come because of our desire to be with him and to grow with him through that process of sanctification. But the relationship has to be the priority. And Jesus has a relationship with these guys. He loves them. John even calls himself the one whom, whom Jesus loves, right? Which I still don't see how you can give yourself your own title. But anyway, that's what he does. And guys, this is very important stuff as, as we understand that relationship matters. Now, we we'll look at 28. What does 28 says? I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. So he's clearing up the old question that many of us guys ask all the time. Yo, where are you from? Right? How many times have you guys asked that? Hey, where are you from? This is just a common question. So he was the incarnation of God on earth. That was it. And he's always been with God. Period. Right? The entering part was key. Because he created that new covenant when he did that. Right? And he did that for everyone. Jews and the Gentiles. And this is what rubbed so many people wrong. Because this wasn't just a Jewish thing. This was for everyone. Right? And this leaving created some sorrow, for sure. We've already talked about that. But they knew if, it had, if he had to leave, it was best if he went to the Father. Right? They, they get that. They understood that. 
And that's the beauty of the gospel, fellas. That is it. That is it. He took on his, he took, when he took his humanity to the Father, he took all of our sins with him. And that's, man, I don't know about y'all. That just gets me fired up. It really does. Right. And that's plain talk right there. But he's giving them plain talk. And how many times do you guys, guys go out there? Maybe you can relate with this. Maybe you guys got people at work who you can never get a straight answer. Or they feel like they always have to give you the most articulate answer. We'll tell you what. If you can answer something in five words, don't use ten. Just use five. There is something to be said about the ability to have straight talk. You know, it should be a core value that we as Christians have. Don't feel like you have to always go in here with these huge words and, and process it. No. Just keep it simple. Jesus spoke very plainly to them. Very plainly to them. And think about it for, for you right now. When did the truth of the gospel come clear to you? Was it through some, through some deep theological uh, overview of justification? No. Most likely it was someone simply sharing the good news of the gospel. I totally get we want we should be growing in Christ. We should definitely be challenging ourselves. But don't miss the simplicity of what Jesus is trying to, to teach them and to show us. Now, let's look at these last two verses of this part of this part. His disciples said, Lo, now you are speaking plainly, you're not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you are all things, and you have no need for anyone to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Right? Right? So they had that aha moment. You can hear it right here. The disciples had an aha moment. Holy crap. Like, I get it now, right? And how does it make you feel? Like, when you're putting a puzzle together, and you finally get that final piece of the puzzles, and it starts, and you start to, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Right? It gets you pumped up, right? So imagine them. They had all these teachings. They had all these parables, all these stories that, that Jesus told. Now, to get that clarity. Get that clarity, right? It had to just be such a wonderful moment to finally, like, I totally get it now. Maybe we've done this, like, math, like, from, from engineering school. I remember doing a lot of math. And when you finally get that moment where, where the certain principles or, or, or these actions fall in place and, you, and it clicks, right? Boom. Okay. Oh, that's what you're, I see what you're doing there. That's what was going on here, fellas. That's what was going on here. And I just think it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing um, when we start thinking about it to understand that the like, guys that that is from, from the good news of the gospel. This is what Jesus is promising here, right? The truth is we got to have him. We got to have Jesus, right, to go to the Father. We need to understand that. And everything about our victory, guys, everything about our victory is based on the fact that He is with Him right now. Think about it. He's with him right now. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, right? No one gets to, to him except through him. He is the way, the truth, and the life, right? He is it. There's no other path, guys. So we have to be super clear on that, super intentional on that as we move forward in our faith. And I'm telling you, it's, there's something power about, powerful about that. And I, we're going to wrap this up today here in a minute on how we can have peace and courage. because of our victory in Christ. So we're going to take our last break of the day, guys. We'll be, we'll be right back, and we'll dig into this last piece of Scripture. Outside of God's Word, what should you be reading to grow as a Christian leader? It can be daunting to see all the options available these days. To help bring you some sanity to your search, we compiled all of our featured books of the week so you can make wise choices and strengthen your mind. The topics range from health, wealth, and self, so there's something there for all you guys. Whether you're looking for books for yourself or maybe you're researching ideas for other men, this is going to be a resource that brings you value. So check out the lionwithin.us forward slash book to see what would serve you the best right now and start sharpening your mind to be that leader you're predestined to be. That's the lionwithin.us forward slash book to learn more. All right, guys, so we've been working through this, this part of John, okay? So we, were, we started off here in John 16, and we, we read uh, 19 through 22, and then we started talking through, um, where were we at? 27 through 30, so we just read, and now we're going to finish it up 31 through 33. So we've been all over the place, really, where we're talking a lot about 
uh, the, the different things of Jesus' departure, what what that impact was, what he was trying to teach his disciples. Now, let's get down to these last couple of verses, because this is really where I guess you could say it's all leading to this. It's kind of getting to this, this, to this, to these moments. And it's where it says right here in 31, Jesus answered him. Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, to leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Guys, powerful verses right here. And it's so cool that he just didn't say, like, maybe or hopefully in this last statement, right? No, he's confidence. He's confidence. And he delivered that. He spoke it by the creator of the universe. He spoke these things, right? He is our conqueror. Guys, we should have so much, so much confidence in this, right? Because things may be going pretty good. I totally get it. Some, some, some of you guys may be crushing stuff and you don't feel like you even need to conquer. Like, Chris, I got this stuff. Don't worry about it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? I, I, I'm out here. I'm doing my thing. I make plenty of money. I have nice cars. I, I'm just trying to listen in line with this just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Be careful. Be careful. Because eventually, you know what's going to happen? Life. Life's going to happen. Jobs get lost. Bro, just straight up. Even if you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business, things happen. Right? You have to be ready for that. Health, you know, healthy one day, going the next. I'm telling you, fellas, it's real. There's things that are just out there. Sickness, all these things, they're just out there. Kids, right? Kids, are, hey, you you want a stressor? Add some kids to your, to your life. <laughs> That's just a stress. I'm just being real with you, fellas. Life happens. Cancer, all these things that are out there. Worries, anxieties, broken hearts. Fellas, I'm just telling you, we all need conqueror and we have it we have it we put our faith in jesus so let's look at these last couple of verses here just verse by verse fellas jesus said to them in verse 31 do you now believe okay this could be a statement or a question depending on the context right could be clarifying and also declaring right so either way jesus is showing up right here he was showing encouragement to these guys and that they were starting to finally get it. Okay. I've been showing you. I've been trying and trying and trying. And now, praise the Lord, you're starting to get it. And look, he does that with us too, guys. Let's just be real. Because how many times I'm sure my Savior is sitting up there watching me like, Chris, what in the world are you doing? And finally, when I do it his way, he, I, I, I could probably hear him if I, if I could hear that. that you know, the, him speak from heaven directly about time. Praise the Lord, right? He finally gets it, right? And we're, now you believe. And it's so important, guys. You need to ask yourself that question. Where you, do you now believe? That may be one of the most important questions. This is a spirit-led thing. This is not in my notes or anything. Do you believe? It's okay to read this stuff and to think through the stories and the accounts. And to have it kind of at a distance, at arm's length for the guys that are watching on YouTube, I'm trying to do that arm's length, right? Think about the old guy uh, who who does the uh, the Heisman, right? The Heisman maneuver, right? Boom. Got that arm out, keeping that arm's length. Do you believe, though? Are you keeping Jesus at arm's length? Or are you accepting him into your heart? Because here's the thing, fellas. Once you accept him in your heart, everything changes. Everything changes. So just be aware of that. So maybe that's the most important question you need to ask yourself today is, do you believe? Okay. Now look at verse 32. Behold, an hour is coming and it's already come. For you will be scattered and each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. So this time it's Jesus, Jesus talking about right here. He's actually fulfilling some prophecy back in Zechariah. Okay, so if you go to Zechariah 13, 7, 13, verse 7, it says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, right? And that's what's going on right here. And I think about old anthills, right? 
you, you know, if you hit that ant hill, what's going to happen? Boom. They going everywhere. They are going everywhere, right? And it's, and it may fall, uh, but it's going to think about ant hills too. Even though you knock them down, guess what happens? They going to come right back up, right? <laughs> They're going to eventually rebuild, right? Now, do you think what Jesus said right here, do you, you will leave me alone? Do you think that made Jesus sad? I, mean, I think about stuff like that, you know? Like, think about you when, when you're left alone by yourself. How do you feel? A couple of things I thought about. Deserted. Abandoned. Lost. Insignificant. Right? We all feel those things. Heck, the line within us, we're all about helping guys who feel lost and alone, man. That's it. You know, they feel disconnected. They're looking for that, that group of guys. They just don't have it. Jesus felt the feels, man. He's right here. But how beautiful is it that he did that that he had the yet part of the statement, right? I'm alone yet. He says right here, he was not alone, and neither are we. Why? Why was he why was he not alone? Right here, what is it says? He says, Yet yeah, I am not alone because the Father is with me. He is with he is with you guys. And that's the greatest part we have. We're not alone either. No matter what we're going through. When he was going through his torture, when Jesus was being crucified on that cross, he was not alone, right? Where were his boys at? His boys were hiding in the shadows. The only one that we really know that was there was John, because he told John to take care of my mama, right? He's the only one that we really know that was there at the crucifixion. The rest of them, they gone. You know what they were doing? Take care of themselves, because it's our nature. It's our nature. You may be saying, well, Chris, if I was there, I would be with him. Oh, yeah. You can't say that. There's tons of persecution. How quickly do we have when that persecution hits? This is real. This is what's real. He's reminding them, right, though, look, you guys, I'm not alone, right? And neither are you. And there is so much comfort in that verse right there, guys. He is not alone. And we need to understand because the Father's with him and the Father's with us. And this last verse that we'll look at together, guys, this is the verse of the week. These things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Guys, this, again, final words of encouragement right here. Final words of encouragement that Jesus has given. Again, he's getting ready to give his priestly prayer, but he's with his boys right here. He's with his boys right here. He's with them. He's trying to make sure that they understand, look, some, some stuff's getting ready to go down. It's getting ready to get real. It's not going to end well. And you guys may think, you guys may think that I'm gone and that that we lost. I need you to understand. Take courage. I'm going to have to overcome. I'm going to be victorious. And guys, because we have put our faith and our trust in in the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we have to. And that's what you can hang your hat on, fellas. If anything, just hang your hat on that right there. Take courage. And I know the world's throwing all sorts of stuff at us, fellas. I am telling you, I teach Sunday school. I also, with the line within us, I, you know, when you start doing this type of work, you see all the darkness that's out there. And the way the marriages are under attack, the way that our kids are under attack, when sickness hits. I just, I literally just saw a post the other day for a, a lady in our community, 32 years old, cancer, killed her. You see this stuff, man. And it's, it don't. This doesn't make any sense. You're like, why? Why? You know, you hear the old thing. Why does good things happen or bad things happen rather to good people? And that drives a lot of people away from the church. Matter of fact, a good friend of mine, I, I've heard that the reason he will not plug into the church is he he asks himself this question, particularly when it has to do with kids and things like that. And look, we could give you all the theological answers in the world of why bad things happen. They're not going to bring you any comfort, any comfort in those moments. Well, all we can have right here is courage that our Savior has overcome the world and that his sovereignty is in all things. Look, I don't know why we lost our daughter. I'll never know that one. But I trust in him. And at the moment of this recording, her birthday is coming up in a couple weeks, and it's still hard. It is extremely hard. My wife was breaking out big time the other night. Becca, if you're listening to this right now, I love you, girl. And I'm just telling you, fellas, 
There's things that happen we can't have answers to. But I can promise you this. You can be victorious. We can have a life of victory. It may not be like what we think of, like to what the world thinks of as victorious. But we can live, have victory in Christ. We can. We can overcome dark valleys. You know, we're not in that valley where, where we lost faith anymore. We still go there from time to time and get sad. But we have joy. We know that when she opened her eyes, she saw Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. And for people who don't have that type of comfort or don't have that type of belief, I just feel I'm really sad for them. And as believers, guys, as, as Christian men, we got to start standing up and letting our faith drive our walk. And don't be ashamed of the gospel. And it can't just be a Sunday thing either. This has got to be an everyday thing. Every day, look for those opportunities. Because if you look for opportunities to share the good news of the gospel, just John 16, 33 right here, just share this little story with someone. You'll never know what the Holy Spirit can do with it. Because too often we put the Holy Spirit in a box. I do. Put him in a box. Well, I don't know, man. I don't know about this. This may be, this is uncomfortable. You know, people may judge me. All the things that we say, right? It's real. Just being real with y'all because I know how it is. Take courage and understand that he has overcome the world. And you can be victorious, fellas. I'm telling you. The question of the week, though, who gets the credit when you are victorious? I just pray this dude, by listening to God's word right here and seeing how I try to simplify and apply this to my life, that you can do the same. That you can simplify and apply this to your life and take this right here and walk in confidence, not cocky, but confidence in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross. And it counted, guys. It totally counted. It matters. This is such a big deal. So I'd love to know what you guys think of this, man. This I'm thinking about doing this more and more, maybe once a month for the far solo episodes, just going through a lesson like this. This is typically how I teach. I'd love your feedback on this episode. And I know I ask you for, for, for your feedback all the time. But if you would, just send an email to support at the line within .us. I, I get that. That comes directly to me. I love your, your, your insight. Do you like this format? Uh, would you like more topical stuff? But if you, if you enjoyed this one, Hey, let me know. And you know what? If you didn't enjoy it, if it absolutely sucked and you said, Chris, you just need to have guests, let me know that too. I need to know what's real because I ultimately want to serve you, the listeners with what you enjoy, what you find value in. I know most people listen to podcasts when they're doing stuff and that's great. But at the end of the day, I want to try to give you something that's going to help you grow closer to Christ and be that leader that God intends you to be. So many of us just feel like we can't be that leader. So my prayer is by, by spending a little bit more time in God's word with you guys, that it's going to help you grow. Maybe we'll have some more. It is written. So remember that John 16, 33, you got to have that. And that will help us grow in our walk. So I pray you would share this with someone else. That's the best way to help, help the podcast. Share it with someone. Ratings review definitely help. If you could just open up whatever app you're on, give us a five-star rating and review, whatever way works best for you. That does matter. Uh, if you want to support the show, that would be wonderful. We we love to have the, we have a lot of donors now. So go to the line with us. You can go to the donate page. Maybe you want to be a monthly donor, a monthly supporter. That would be awesome. Or one-time donor, whatever works for you. Just know that every little bit helps. So don't, don't think it's too small. We got guys, we got a lot of guys who just give five bucks a month. Hey, that, that really makes an impact. And we have guys who give a lot more than that. So look, whatever the Lord leads you, we still have the community, uh, for sure. There's so many wonderful things going on in there, guys. And I also, if you, if you want to just see the community, just send an email support at the lie within dot us. I will set up a time. I will show you the community. Be, be glad to peel back the, the curtain for you. There's nothing to be hidden here. I'm very open, very transparent. I do this with people all the time because I want you to see what you're getting. And again, we still have a 30-day free trial. We're, we're, we're just going to have that because I'm a really big proponent in letting people see what, it, what, what value we have. And you know what? If you don't see any value, you got 30 days, cancel it. But that's the greatest way you can support the line within us. It's just about being part of the community, not just to support the, the line within us, but it helps you grow. 
Because I'm telling you, I have seen more growth in some these Christian men than, than I ever dreamed. Marriage is being healed. Pornography being kicked to the curb. Uh, areas of our life being strengthened by, by digging into the word. Challenges, accountability. I'm telling you, I can't make this stuff up because you, nobody would believe it. It's just unreal to see how, how men are helping each other and how they're craving. They're just craving connection, community, uh, being able to, to actually talk openly and not worried about, hey, am I going to see that dude later at, 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 at the grocery store or at, out to dinner? I don't want him to know about all the stuff that's going on in my life. I'm telling you, none of that happens here. These guys just open. They just share. It's really awesome. So highly encourage you to check that out. Again, we do have the daily spiritual kickoff. That's an, that offers out there for, for a lot of guys too. And maybe you just want to have that daily kick in the pants to get you going. The daily spiritual kickoff is where it's all about. We still have coaching where there's all sorts of ways and then speaking guys. So if I can, if you feel like there's something that can help you or your men's group, go to the line within dot us slash speaking. You should be able to see it on the main page. There's a, there's a link there to go check it out. Our speaking, we have several different ready-made presentations that can really help facilitate discussion in your men's group. That's what it's all about. You know, it's not just about me coming in and giving us some, sp some speech. I mean, I could totally do that. There wouldn't be a lot of value there. What I like to do is come in and give the topics. I, I, I have presentations and let's get guys talking. Hey, let's just get guys talking and have a conversation because where the conversation happens, that's when iron starts sharpening iron. I've seen it time and time again within the line within us, the way we roll. And fellas, if you need help with that, go to the line within.us slash speaking. Connect me with your pastor. Connect me with your men's group leader, whatever. Connect me with you. Just reach out. And guys, I'm telling you, there's opportunities here to grow. Men's ministry is suffering. We got to take a stand. And we need to start doing that with some like the resources we built here are, is to combat that directly. Like it's not the end all be all, but it's a doggone good start for you guys to start leading in, having your own men's group, your own discipleship group. Let me come in. Let me show you how to do it. And then you take it. You go out there, you replicate it, and then you just keep unleashing a lot with men. That's what it's all about, fellas. So hopefully you'll come back on Friday. I have some really fun tips I think are going to help you. A couple of them are actually from our community itself, from, from our guys directly. So again, let me know what you think about this one. Love for your feedback on it. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to The Line Within Us. There's so many other podcasts out there. The fact that you listen to, to this one week in and week out, it just warms my heart. It's so good to, to, to see this, that, that hopefully – we're doing the work uh, and being obedient to the spirit. And that is making an impact in your life. So keep after it. Stay strong. See you back here for our fun Friday. And don't forget to unleash the lion within.